Howdy guys, welcome to the uh, first episode of How You Going with Jason Owen. It's um, it's exciting, I, we're all in isolation, there's nothing happening, trying to keep motivated and it's uh, just a little idea I decided to throw together, reach out to some friends um, and thankfully, you know, quite a few mates have gotten back to me, they've wanted to have a chat which is great and um, tonight we're joined by Studio 10 host, television personalities, a legend, Joe Hildebrand. Thanks, Joe, before the interview starts, mate. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, guys, so welcome to the first episode. How are you going with Jason Owen? And it's something that we're going to chuck up here and there throughout the coming weeks. And looking forward to sharing them all with you. So here we go. That's enough for me. Let's go and have a chat to Joey. Hey, guys, I'm joined by Joe Hildebrand. How are you, Joe? Hey, Jason. I'm great, mate. How are you? Not too bad, mate. It's a funny time at the moment, though, isn't oh, it? It is absolutely crazy. You'll probably hear my... Um, nutbag family in the background just screaming their heads <laughs> off. They're bouncing off the walls. I think the baby's just woken up. My mum, my um, wife, I was going to say mama <laughs> to everyone else in the house. Um, the only question is who is she going to kill first, me or the kids? But, um, <laughs> it is just a madhouse. Yeah, mate. Look, obviously we're in isolation at the moment, Joe. And um, how are you going, mate? You're getting through it all right? What have you got any tips for people? Yeah. Well, look, the, the government, in its infinite wisdom, um, mate, has uh, defined Studio Ten as an essential service. So I'm actually going to work um, every morning, and um, and and we're sitting at the desk, but social distancing. So we're sitting like two meters apart, yep. um, which is kind of surreal. But we're um. We're, we're punching that out as usual. And then the rest of my life, I only ever left the house to go to the supermarket anyway. So it actually hasn't changed um, what I do much at all. But I'm, I'm really worried about all the other people out there. We've got heaps of people um, we know who work in the arts and, and music and showbiz, um, comedy, like all these people just been absolutely kind. Just, I know you're struggling as well. Just People have just had a whole year's worth of work worth of bookings worth of jobs just wiped out just instantly and that just that just really you know to be honest i'm fine the corona crisis has been really good to me but um uh, other people i just everyone around me it feels like has just been smashed by it yeah mate so like obviously the social distancing and things like that so you guys you obviously don't have a live audience there either i couldn't tell yesterday no. i was watching you yesterday <laughs> by there on studio 10 and i i watched for about half an hour and i didn't seem to flick but i seen you guys with social distancing and that is it seemed to lose like you lose the vibe in in the in the it's, um, it's really surreal well look as i've been telling people at least my jokes get the same number of laughs yeah but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is really surreal and it's um uh, without wanting to get sort of too worthy about it. But our audiences are really, um, it's, it's a huge number of regulars. They're really close-knit. They basically treat the place as their second lounge room. They come in from all over. They've made friends with each other, been friends for years. They go out, you know, usually halfway through one of my stories and get a coffee in the middle of the show. Um, so it's sort of sad that they've lost that kind of little community. I mean, I know they'll get it back eventually when it all goes back, but, you know, a lot of these people are older. Um, a lot of them um, aren't that mobile in other ways, and they don't, you know, have. They're not. They're not the ones going out to Ark Nightclub and touching the sky at three <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Um, and and so this is one of the things I love most about the show is that it has sort of brought that sort of little family together, and they're really cheeky bastards and everything. But the, the, the show is the kind of hub. They come from all. You know, they come from everywhere, from the central coast to out west to. Um, to down south to the show and um and they kind of just don't have that um anymore so all they can do is groan at my jokes online now yeah i was, I was talking to john o'coleman mate before you yeah and um, oh. he said he's been sitting in the audience giving you a round of applause he said that's the only <laughs> one in there for the last few weeks and he said it's been well, absolutely yes. <laughs> That's right. For the first for the first week, we just had this we just had this default tape of um, it's like it was like in one of those action movies where they where they flick the um flick the camera on and off and have it just a, the holding pattern and our holding pattern was just yeah. Jono Jono laughing and clapping his hands. But I think we've lost even him now. But um, I'm still receiving about twenty quasi illiterate text messages from Jono every day interspliced with pictures of him um, topless in his pool at his Palm Beach bolt hole. So I, I think you'll do it, all right. I think you'll pull through. The best one I've seen was Jono and Nolsey. 
I love that. That was yeah. that was top city spa, mate. That was great. That yeah. was absolutely great. I proposed there, mate, on Studio I Ten. I know. I remember it well. It was the most it was the most romantic moment of my life, and I include my own proposal in that. And I couldn't I couldn't bloody believe that before I did that, I literally had to sing the power of love of all songs. <laughs> And I, I couldn't even sing it in the friggin' studio, mate, let alone live on yeah. national television at 10.30 in the morning or whatever it was. Yeah, and, well, um, as, as I'm evidence of, Jase, every uh, man who comes on the show has to be ritually emasculated and humiliated before they can proceed. So that's just, that's just part, of the, <laughs> part, of the, part of the traditional initiation ceremony. Yeah, yeah mate, where, where did you propose, Jase? I proposed to my lovely wife um, in Istanbul, believe it or not. I'm, um, yep. uh, as all our um, half asleep audience knows, because they start off awake and then they end up half asleep after I finish talking about it, but I'm obsessed with Roman history. So um, we went away and um, looked at all these Roman ruins in Turkey. And uh, of course, Istanbul was the old capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, Constantinople. And I can see people out there are starting to fall asleep already again. So uh, anyway, we went there, um, went to this fancy restaurant that Tara had. She's a bit of a foodie. I am certainly not. Um, we had this fancy restaurant. I think I ordered like the steak and chips or something. Anyway, I'd smuggled um, the, the this old ring, this old family heirloom um, of hers. I'd asked her, asked her mum and dad for her hand in marriage, just not because I'm a romantic, but I just wanted to avoid any complications. Down the track, <laughs> <you know? laughs> and and um, anyway, we had this. So I, I got down on one knee. I pulled out the ring. I proposed. Um, she said yes, I think probably just because she was drunk. We ordered um, another bottle of champagne and then I think probably another bottle after that and maybe one more. And anyway, <laughs> it got to the end of the night and um, – it was and it was like super, I don't know how it was hundreds of bucks or something and and yeah. it's like ah oh, don't worry darling I got to blah 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 and um, pull out the credit card give it to the the waiter you know sign some stupid tip you know to show what a big guy I was and um, the waiter comes back and this excuse me sir your card has been declined. <laughs> and I went, oh, sorry, pardon me. Oh, it must be some kind of mistake. Blah blah blah. blah. Anyway, um, long story short, my card was totally, totally rejected, and um, uh, my beloved wife ended up paying for the whole thing. And it's fair to say I've been paying for everything else ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've got a late congratulations in order. You and your, and your partner Tara had. Literally a baby girl late last year. Is that correct? We did. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Yeah. So we've got um, we've got three now. Obviously, the third was a mistake. I've now had a vasectomy just so it won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we um, yeah, no, we've got the full catastrophe, and um, it's just it's it's not right. It's it's <laughs> we've started, and it's um, and you can see you can see the difference between sort of two kid families and three kid families where the a mate of mine said uh, who also has three said said being being through having three kids is like being stoned all the time you've got heavy eyelids and a warm inner glow uh, <laughs> that's great that's absolutely <laughs> great mate so with, with so, the three with the three little ones running around joe have you got any yeah. advice for people at home that are in isolation now um yeah. with three kids any activities what are you what are you guys doing at home with the, see with if the you kids? can sell one um maybe <laughs> just I'm not sure, but maybe I've been reading too much Oliver Twist, but I don't know if you can you send them out to beg for food. Uh, no, I'm not allowed to do that because I'm not allowed to leave the house. Um, we've been trying. To, I, I came home and I'm only my, my wife is in the kitchen with a with a rolling pin uh, slapping against her palm because uh, she's trying to hurdle uh, to round up all the kids <laughs> because they <laughs> just got absolutely feral. Um, we yeah. are homeschooling the six-year-old and he has started screaming because um, he wanted some rice chippies. We tried to get him to go onto the trampoline. He won't even go on the trampoline. So he won't even uh, forget about lockdown. He actually wants to be in lockdown. We can't even get him out of lockdown to go and turn it off. Uh, my uh, three-year-old daughter has just, she's a three-nager. She is running, she refuses to wear pants. Uh, much like our old man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something to be proud of. At least I know yeah. she's mine. Um, she's, she's running She's running around stark naked, just screaming uh, at everything. She had a one-hour meltdown this morning because 
um, her toast wasn't correctly spread with Vegemite. Apparently, oh, the, apparently the um, dispersion of the Vegemite wasn't perfect, so that was an hour out of our lives. We'll never get back. And then the um, the third one, the, the little the six month old Bella, she's just perfect, and she's just good. And I think I think the third one, um, someone someone who was themselves a third child said to me, said, "We know no one's coming." You know, we know not to make a fuss. <laughs> we know just to just accept our lot in life. So yeah, good um, on you, mate. <laughs> so my advice, my advice would be: if you have three children, don't do it. If it's too late, just close your eyes and think of England. Yeah, <laughs> good on you, Joey, mate. Look, I've got Pleasure, mate. at the end of every interview, I do a little four question thing called sure. serious questions. And the right, first question it. is, have you been able to maintain motivation during isolation? And if so, how? Obviously, you've been able to go to work, which is good. Yeah, look, my entire um, my entire motivation prior to this was just to get as many discount bulk buys from the supermarket as I possibly could. And now that um, people have started hoarding toilet paper, um, that's no longer socially acceptable. So I've lost that. I've compensated for it by going online and buying 1980s action figures on eBay. So um, I'm aiming for a, um, you know, a Transformer-led recovery. Yeah, right. Okay. There you go. Mate, yeah, um, yeah. who's your biggest imp- inspiration, Joey? In uh, life or your career or just, just you know, in, life? In life general, or yeah. in lockdown? Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> let me think. Maybe it's the guy who invented Ikea. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just, I mean, I know we're not really allowed to go there anymore, but there's just something to be said for a man who, you know, you can just, you, I just go to Ikea for the breakfast. I don't even really like the furniture, but you go there for the breakfast. It's a great way to eat airline food when you don't actually have to fly anywhere. You can just, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a strong contender. Yeah, yeah, that's it, mate. What about, um, what would you say your biggest highlight thus far in your career is, Joey? What What do you reckon? Oh, look, I would have to say, um, so I would have to say, Studio Ten has got to be the highlight because it yeah. is just, it is just not a real job. It is yeah. just awesome. You just, you sit around, you talk shit with your friends. Um, uh, I'm like besties with Sarah Harris, um, so we just, we just get paid to just, just talk. And I just, I obviously try to. Um, crack her up at inappropriate times throughout the show, make her yeah. make her laugh um, at, uh, at at moments when we're trying to convey a real sense of sadness and gravitas in the show. Like if something really tragic's happened, I like to send her a little text message of you know like, like a goat playing the guitar, something like that. Maybe something creative. Yeah. That way, hopefully, um, she will laugh. Um, uh, viewers will be outraged. Call for her to be sacked, and then I can take her job. <laughs> I've, got, I've actually got to give her I've got to flick her a message mate I'd love to have her on actually it'd be great I'll, I'll, I'll put in a good word for you yeah I'm sure I can arrange that she owes me big time oh no <laughs> mate and the last one for the viewers at home Joey um who would be one of the most interesting celebrities you've ever met and why were they interesting oh well probably not for the obvious reasons but um just because of events Recently, um, I've been remembering the time I sat down to interview George Pell, and it was quite a um, okay. in-depth kind of interview. It was, it was kind of sort of philosophical and broad sort of thing where talking about what he believed in and what sort of thing. And, and of course, when you look at – and this was before any of the allegations, any of the, the court cases, and, and obviously certainly before he floored us all by um, walking free. And, um, and I've just started – thinking about that and trying to think about what I could sort of decipher from that that might give some kind of clue about who he is, um, you know, what he did or didn't do. Um, so that's been on my mind recently. Um, but apart from that, I always think um, um, I always think you should never meet your heroes. The only uh, – I will, you know what, I will tell you, Albo. I, um, I sat down with him. Um, just after he got made leader um, for a newspaper, uh, a magazine sort of feature. I'd known him before, obviously. He actually lives in my suburb. And yeah. um, and so uh, I sat down with him at his place and, and he is one of the very few people um, who is, is no bullshit, you know. He had a Corolla in the driveway, you know. There were empty coffee cups in the house, you know. is like a proper just a normal sort of 
person. You know, when you see him, when you see him chopping up bullies in his board shorts, you know that it's that's great, mate. That's really, really what he that's does. That's fantastic, so. Joey. Bloody oath, yeah, mate. He's well, a good guy. Mate, I'll let you get back to the to the children and the lovely wife. No, please, and, no, um, I don't want to go. Save yeah. me. <laughs> Let's talk some more. What are your no, four favourite things? Oh, that, I don't know, mate. I, I I didn't plan that one. No, it's <laughs> um, it's it's awesome, Joey. I, I, oh, it's great, mate. I, I, re- I really appreciate people like yourself coming on and having a chat. This is oh, brand mate, new for me. No, and, I love you guys, um, mate. No. No, we really appreciate you coming on and proposing to your girlfriend on our show. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't easy, mate. It was hard. I had to sing that song and I thought, do, can I do this? Can I do this? But I did. So I must I must admit, I thought if we turned the, the studio lights up too high, because this guy's really sweating. What's, oh, what's it, was, <laughs> it was hard, mate. It's, to belt mate. that song out and then follow oh, it up with a proposal. You made, you made it look so easy. Oh, I didn't feel it, mate. <laughs> Good on you, buddy. You're an absolute You're a great legend. Bike. See you, Jace, anytime, All the mate. best. Catch Take you. care, Catch mate. You Thank too. you. Okay, Thanks, Charlie.